Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. It's been my intention to deliver hopeful, optimistic news to counter the torrents of vile negative horror that are dished up every day by old-fashioned media outlets. But this time, there are a couple of stories that are a bit on the negative side. Do not mention okay, Pinkley okay, Point C. I won't, I won't, all right. Now, there's a blog called DSmog, which follows the exploits of big oil companies and the influence they have on our <coughs> democratically elected governments that have taken our country back to the 1950s. Do not mention Hinkley Point C. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now, through a Freedom of Information request, DSmog have acquired papers revealing the extent of Exxon's lobbying against electric vehicles in this country and their insistence that battery and hydrogen vehicles are not commercially viable at a large scale. Oh really? Well, what a surprise they would have such an opinion, particularly after recent reports that the global sales of electric vehicles are rocketing ever upwards. Oh, the total number of electric cars on the UK's roads is now over 80,000, up from just 2,000 five years ago. Globally, the figures are even more disruptive. 6,000 electric cars on the world's roads in 2009, 1.2 million last year. Of course, Exxon aren't the only ones lobbying governments around the world. Those old fossil stalwarts, the Koch brothers, uh, some say Coke, but I prefer Koch, have released a report called Fueling US Forward, unless it means fueling us forward, which is a rabid, last-ditch, desperate assault on electric vehicles and renewable energy. Good for them, I say. What else do you expect from some very wealthy old blokes who've made a fortune selling a product with tailpipe emissions that kill tens of thousands of people every year? <laughs> and now schools. This report did get me a bit ranty because it's so blatantly stupid, short-sighted, half-baked and massively unfair to normal people. Now, if your children attend a charity school, <laughs> sorry, I mean a private school in the UK, because private schools are all charities, uh, not a lot of people know that, but if you don't live in the UK, it must sound even more insane. Anyway, if they do attend a charity private school, these schools will maintain all the tax advantages and reduced building rates due to having installed solar panels on the roof of the old assembly room next to the quad. Come along, children. <laughs> and of course, they will benefit greatly from reduced electricity bills during the day when the schools use a lot of electricity. However, if your kids go to a normal state school, which aren't charities, which we all pay for, they'll have to rip the solar panels off their roof because they will now have to pay extra rates for having them. And the already stretched school budgets can't cover this massive increase. It's barking mad, unfair and designed to annoy the maximum number of people possible. So be annoyed. Write to your MP. Get shouty about it. Not that our present government will give a flying toss. They're too busy having lunch meetings with fossil fuel companies and the nuclear industry. Do not mention Hinkley Point sorry, C. Sorry, sorry, all right, anyway, enough, enough negative nonsense. Here's something positive that caught my eye. China is installing one new wind turbine every hour. What the what? Yeah, according to new analysis of the latest data on the country's startling state-backed renewables boom, China is installing one wind turbine an hour. A new wind turbine every hour? Here's some Llewellyn maths. Or if you're American, math. A new wind turbine every hour is 24 a day, 168 a week, 672 a month, and 8,064 a year. If all those are 2.5 megawatt wind turbines, they are adding 20 gigawatts of generating capacity per year, just from wind. Many of the newest and biggest wind turbines produce way more, so 20 gigawatts per annum is a very conservative estimate. Now cars. Opel, the German arm of General Motors, published details about its upcoming Ampera E. This is the European version of the Chevy Bolt. With a range of over 230 miles or 400 kilometers on one charge, it's due to arrive at dealerships in Germany in the spring of 2017. Now, the UK may have to wait for the second generation of the Ampera E, as Opel subsidiary Vauxhall, which is a UK company, will not be offering the EV for now. That's very sad, as it sounds really good. General Motors are a global company who make lots of vehicles. They sell loads of big gas-guzzling pickup trucks and cars, but because of annoying government legislation, they have to make some electric cars too. It's taken a while until they came out with a reasonably priced electric car with an impressive range. I'm not sure what prompted them to change tack and increase battery capacity. I mean, 
Surely it couldn't be because some jumped up little car company launched a car that costs much the same as the ones they make, goes over 200 miles on a charge, and nearly 400,000 people have put down a deposit for one without having seen or test driven anything. So I say hats off to General Motors for releasing the Chevy Bolt in America and the Ampera E in Europe. Do not mention Europe. Oh, sorry, sorry. As you might have guessed, my hat is already off for Tesla, who've given the established automotive industry a massive kick up the jacksy. And finally, batteries. Oh my God, batteries. I've been barking on about batteries for years, and now at last it looks like I'm not the only one. This is some gobsmacking news from Bloomberg Business. Now we've all heard about the Tesla Gigafactory. The spin is that Tesla will double the entire world's battery manufacturing capacity in one single building. They claim they will be producing 35 gigawatt hours of batteries every year. But that's not even half the story. BYD, the Chinese battery company, is ramping up their production. They plan to be building 34 gigawatt hours of batteries by 2019. So that's 35 added to 34, that's, that's 69 gigawatt hours of electricity storage a year between them. But that's not all. Contemporary Amperex Technology, another Chinese battery maker, is planning to increase manufacturing capacity to reach 26 gigawatt hours a year by 2020. So that's 35 and 34 and 26, which is 95 gigawatt hours of batteries made every year. Of course, you have to add that figure to the estimated 30 gigawatt hours of batteries a year that are already being produced, which takes it to 35 and 34 and 26 and 30, which is 125 gigawatt hours of batteries a year. But that's not all. By 2020, there will be an estimated 5 gigawatt hours of used electric car batteries from the first generation electric cars coming onto the market each year. Many will be repackaged into small household storage systems like the Nissan X-Store or recycled to make new batteries. But what this means for the likes of you and me is that batteries are going to get, as some young people are known to say, hella cheaper. They will shift the power loads on national grids and allow people to regulate their electricity consumption in such a way that building Hinkley Do not mention Hinkley Point C will be an even bigger, expensive, pointless white elephant than it is already. OK, that's all for now, but I just want to say there's no question this show would not exist without the amazing support from Patreon donations. Here's some names of amazing individuals who've supported Fully Charged on Patreon for $10 a month or more. So massive thanks to Martin Prattley, Chris Shellard, Wayne Baldry, Antti Valius, Anis El Mariesh, David Flynn, Dominic Westbrook, Paul Horn, Matt Mullis and David Noden-Hooper. And if you have been, of course, thank you for watching.